Dealing with yellowed plastic is a slightly controversial topic in the computer collecting world. Some collectors think that leaving it yellow contributes to the item's history, while others believe that yellowing is not representative of what the item was meant to look like and should be corrected. For those who wish to revert their old yellow plastic back to its original color, there is a common set of instructions available known as the Retrobrite process. To understand the Retrobrite process, let's first explain what causes plastic to turn yellow. ABS plastic made in the last century included a fire retardant called bromine. When bromine is exposed to ultraviolet light, such as sunlight, over a long period of time, it turns yellow. What the Retrobrite process does is use hydrogen peroxide to remove the bromides from the plastic using a short period of ultraviolet light to facilitate the chemical reaction. Some of the vintage computer pieces I own have yellowed over the past few decades, and I want to exhibit them at a local vintage computer show this year, so I decided to see how easy the Retrobrite process was and whether or not it worked. I'd heard that Retrobrite can permanently damage items if you do it wrong, so I decided to start with an item that I wouldn't be too upset if I ruined, a yellowed Logitech mouse from the 1980s that had seen a lot of use. The mouse made a good test subject because the bottom of it wasn't yellow, because sunlight doesn't shine on the bottom of mice, so I had a reference for how it should look if the process was successful. The chemical component of Retrobrite is a hydrogen peroxide gel you are supposed to mix yourself, but a common alternative is a hydrogen peroxide based hair developer which already has a creamy consistency. I picked up some for $6 at a local Sally Beauty supply store. The next step was to take apart the mouse so that the plastic parts could be separated away from the electronics. This isn't always possible with much larger items, but if you can take apart and reassemble the item, you should, as it makes the process easier. I ran into a snag trying to open mine until I realized that there were two additional screws hidden under the void warranty sticker. I doubt Logitech was going to honor any warranty, so these were quickly removed to separate the mouse shell. Once the shell was apart, I did a light surface clean with Windex and paper towels to get any obvious gunk or scuffs off of the plastic. Then I donned latex gloves and proceeded to coat the plastic shell with the hydrogen peroxide cream. The first application looked a little thin to me, so I applied more cream to be sure everything yellow was completely covered with it. I then sealed the parts in a Ziploc bag to prevent the cream from evaporating. All that was needed now was a strong ultraviolet light source. Some people like to use an electrical ultraviolet light in an otherwise dark room over the course of an entire day, but the process usually works better if you use the strongest source of ultraviolet light in the solar system, which is the sun. I chose the sun. While the pieces were out in the sun, I took the opportunity to clean the mouse data cable with some Windex and a lot of scrubbing. While I lightened the cable a little, I wasn't thrilled with the results, so in the future I'll likely use rubbing alcohol for this instead of water or Windex. So, what was the end result? I'd say the results were only partially successful. Let's start with the positives. The dark yellow color was indeed mostly gone. Better yet, it matched the bottom piece. It wasn't any lighter or darker than the bottom piece, and it was the same color. Unfortunately, the result wasn't perfect because I made a major mistake. The restored color was blotchy because I neglected to massage the hydrogen peroxide solution around the plastic every half hour to stop air bubbles in the cream from staying in the same place too long. Also, I put the hydrogen peroxide cream on the mouse buttons, which were not yellow to begin with, but after the process now had light blotches on them. The white blotches on the mouse buttons now appear to be permanent, so that sucks. I felt the result was successful enough that I plan on trying it again, probably with more pieces that I don't care too much if I ruin, just to perfect my technique. Next time, however, I'm going to use saran wrap instead of a Ziploc bag to make sure there is hardly any air to make bubbles in the cream. I'll also set timers to remind me to go outside and move the cream around every half hour. And most importantly, I won't apply the cream to areas that don't need de-yellowing. Once I have the technique perfected, I plan on treating some larger items that I have duplicates of, so that if I ruin one, I have a backup. However, don't confuse this as an endorsement for retrobriting all of your yellowed plastic. Some people have reported that the process damages the plastic and makes it more fragile or brittle. And others have reported that some plastic turns yellow again anyway after a few years. Only you can decide if this process is appropriate for your collection. For more information on how to attempt retrobriding your vintage plastics, check the links in the video description.